Well, if you have a rule, there have to be exceptions, right? So exceptions to the octet rule. Um, if we have an odd number of electrons, there is no way you can draw a Lewis structure where everyone has eight if you have an odd number of electrons. So impossible. That it, these are called free radicals. They have an odd number of electrons. They tend to be unstable and very reactive. And so this is one of the things that, you know, the health people are like, oh, you need to take this to, to cut down on the free radicals. Right? This is what they're talking about. So let's look at the Lewis structure for my favorite compound. No. N O. Number of valence electrons, well, five for the nitrogen and six for the oxygen is 11. Odd number, this isn't gonna work. So we got two, four, six, eight, 10, uh, 11, okay. So there, nitrogen has seven, oxygen has six. We can do better than that. We can take a lone pair here and share it. Here we have oxygen with eight and nitrogen with two, four, six, seven. So that's a possibility. The other possibility is to put that odd electron on the oxygen instead and have the nitrogen have the octet. How do we choose formal charges? So this nitrogen, nitrogen always brings in five electrons and here it's leaving with one, two, three, four, five. So that's a zero formal charge. And here this oxygen, oxygen brings six and leaves with two, four, five, six. Zero formal charges. I think we have our winner. You can't get lower than all being zero. Down here, we have five, minus six is negative one. And over here we have six minus five is plus one. So this one's negative one and this one's plus one. Lower formal charges. This is the best Lewis structure. So these things happen. Lewis theory doesn't handle it very well but it's okay. Um, which of these atoms would you expect to be a free radical? We can figure this out without drawing Lewis structures. What was the characteristic of a free radical? Odd number of valence electrons, right? So, Carbon has four, oxygen has six. We don't even need to finish, that's gonna be even. Carbon has four and we have two oxygens, two times six. Well, that's gonna be an even number also. Here we have two times five. Well, five's an odd number, but there's two of them, so that becomes even, plus six. That's gonna be even. Here we've got seven from the chlorine and six from the oxygen. That's gonna be an odd number. So this is gonna be the free radical. Free radicals, because they have that one atom with only seven electrons, tend to react in a way that completes the octet of that unhappy guy. Another type of um, exception is an incomplete octet, meaning fewer than eight electrons. And this is gonna happen with um, a couple of the smaller atoms, smaller elements. We already know that hydrogen and helium have their own rule, the duet rule. 
Well, boron and beryllium, which are the next two smallest, um, also will violate the octet rule. So let's look at BF3. So boron in the middle and fluorine around here. So uh, boron has three valence electrons and we have three fluorines that each have seven. So 21 plus three is 24. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's not right. Uh, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. What would we normally do here? We would share some more. We'd say, well, one of the fluorines has to share with boron because boron doesn't have an octet. Well, let's look at the formal charges for this. Boron has three valence electrons as an individual atom. And if we break this guy up, it's going to leave with one, two, three. Zero formal charge. Fluorine with one bond, zero formal charge. Fluorine has seven. When it leaves, it takes two, four, six, and half of that is seven. That's all zero formal charges. If we make a double bond, we're going to have non-zero formal charges. So boron can violate the octet rule by only having six electrons. Now, when this reacts, it will tend to react in a way to complete the octet. It's not that boron never has an octet, but sometimes it doesn't. And I won't try to trick you with it. Beryllium, the other little guy, also will do incomplete octets, okay? So just like hydrogen and helium, the little guys are sometimes happier with fewer electrons. And then we have expanded octets. So we have more than eight electrons. And this can happen in periods three and greater. So period three and above never sounds right to me because it's row three and row four and five and six and seven. And those rows are below <laughs> row three. But it's, it's period three and higher numbers, not higher on the periodic table bigger guys, okay? So elements in period three, four, five, six, seven, all of those guys. In periods one and two, we can't have any expanded octets. So let's look at ASF5 and SF6. And we're running a little short on time here. Well, actually more than a little. So I'm just gonna do these pretty quick here. So five, There's four, and we'll just have to kind of stick this one in here. And you can count all this up and check it later. Well, that's how it's going to be. SF6 is going to look very similar. mess, right? Here we have fluorine. Remember fluorine, right? Fluorine as an atom has seven valence electrons. It's got this one. It wants to make one bond, right? So if fluorine makes one bond, its formal charge is zero. 
So we don't have to do all the math. We can, these are all zero formal charge. What about the sulfur in the middle? How many valence electrons does sulfur have? Six. Okay, let's look at formal charges on H2SO4 with and without an expanded octet. So I'm just going to draw these fairly quickly because the point here is looking at the formal charges. So we're going to have two of these guys. Hopefully you recognize H2SO4 as an acid, right, an oxy acid. Lewis structures for oxy acids, these hydrogens, are always connected to an oxygen. Okay, so let's see. Five times six is, so we have 32. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-eight, thirty, thirty-two. Cool, right? I've got the right number of electrons. Everybody has an octet. How would we expand the octet? Well, we could expand the octet by giving these oxygens a double bond with sulfur. Remember, oxygen likes to have two bonds. This oxygen has two bonds, and this oxygen has two bonds. But this one only has one, which tells me there's going to be a formal charge there. If I put a double bond here, then this oxygen has two bonds. So I've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32. So here's oxygen with an octet and two bonds, zero formal charge. Oxygen with an octet and two bonds, zero formal charge. What about the sulfur? How many valence electrons did sulfur have? Six. six, and it would leave with six, zero. Over here, we've got coming in with six, leaving with seven. So that's negative, oops, wrong one. This is negative one, and this one's gonna be negative one. And sulfur coming in with six and leaving with four. I don't know how much of this I've recorded. It keeps pausing on me. Um, formal charges alert us to the fact that sulfuric acid actually does this instead of this. So in Chem 3A, we let you draw sulfuric acid like that because it follows the 3A rules. We don't do expanded octets in Chem 3A. But now we are in the know, and uh, that's actually wrong. So if you're helping a 3A student, <laughs> don't show them this because their teacher will like, you were cheating. So we can expand octets to lower formal charges for period three elements. Period two elements never have oxpan, expanded octets. So nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, never ever, okay? It's only the bigger guys. So let's write um, Lewis structure for XeF4. So we'll put xenon in the middle and put four fluorines around it. I'm drawing too big. So xenon has eight valence electrons. Four fluorines each have seven plus 28, so 36. Two, four, six, eight, 
10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32. Well, this is new. I still have four more electrons, and I've completed the octets of everybody. Who's big enough to handle more than eight electrons? The xenon. So I can put those extra guys as lone pairs on the xenon. Okay? And if you count up formal charges, that'll all be zero. H3PO4, it's a little bit like H2SO4. Got three hydrogens. So we got three hydrogens plus four oxygens plus five, right? So eight and 24, 32. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-eight, thirty, thirty-two. That's what like what happened with sulfate, sulfuric acid, right? We used up all the electrons, everybody's got an octet, we think we're done. Does everybody have zero formal charges? No. From oxygen's atomic Lewis structure, I remember that oxygen wants to have two bonds. Here's oxygen with two bonds, oxygen with two bonds, oxygen with two bonds, oxygen with one bond. So let's Take, um, we'll take this one and make this into a bonding pair. That will give this oxygen a zero formal charge. And then let's look at the phosphorus in the middle. It had five electrons to start with, and it would leave with one, two, three, four, five. Okay.